Hello, little learners. Welcome back to our pre-K and TK classroom. My name is Miss Lara, and I'm going to be your teacher today. Hello. Now, I would like to meet you. So can you tell me your name, please, when I put my hand to my ear? Are you ready? As loud as you can, wherever you are. Here we go. Oh, I heard it way over here in TV land. Let me see if I got your special letter. I try to guess it. Let's see, I'm going to use a big line and then a little line on top to make a T. Is this your special letter? Yes? No? Maybe? <laughs> well, don't worry if it's not. I'll take another guess tomorrow. But for right now, let's sing our letter T song. It goes like this. The T says T. The T says T. Every letter makes a sound. The T says T. Now, learning our letters and the sounds that they make will help us to be strong readers, won't it? Now, today is day three of the five days that we're going to be together. Let me add another magnet to my 10 frame here. So I have two and one together makes three. And all this week, our anchor text is caps for sale. And we're gonna be learning about clothing because you may have noticed as the weather is getting chilly that you're going to start to need to add layers like a jacket and a hat and a scarf. And that's exactly what our song is about this week. I have some things that keep us warm here. So we're gonna sing our song together. Are you ready? Do you think you know it now? It goes like this. First one, a hat. My hat goes on my head. My hat goes on my head. Warm clothes for when it's cold. My hat goes on my head. That's right. And this hat is very warm. Keeps your ears nice and snug. What else do we have? Ooh, this big long thing. It's a scarf. And where does the scarf go? Around our neck. That's right. Our scarf goes on our neck. Our scarf goes on our neck. Warm clothes for when it's cold. Our scarf goes on our neck. This is a very long one. Yours might be a little shorter. What else do we have in here? Ooh, some mittens. And where do our mittens go? They go on our hands. That's right. Our mittens go on our hands. Our mittens go on our hands. Warm clothes for when it's cold. Our mittens go on our hands. And last thing, we have our neck covered, our head. We have, let's see, mittens for our hands. We need our feet covered, and that is with a boot. Our boots go on our feet. Our boots go on our feet. Warm clothes for when it's cold. Our boots go on our feet. They do, they go right on our feet. What other things might you wear to keep yourself warm? A nice jacket? Ooh, that sounds really cozy. Right now I think it's time for us to check our mail. I wonder what Miss Maria left for us today. She always gives us such nice clues about what is going to be on the text. So here is our letter, and we use our letter to read the words and practice our tracking skills. And we track with our pointer, which is this finger right here. Say hello to your pointer. Hello, pointer, hello. And it's gonna track the words from left to right. And when it gets to the end, it doesn't stop. It returns, sweep, and starts from the left again and slides to the right. All right, here we go, read with me. Dear Miss Lara, there's that return sweep. I lost a button today. It was my favorite button. It was blue and shiny and looked like a dinosaur. Have you seen it? Oh, I know, I miss, I'm missing a button too. I was so sad when my button fell off, but mine was not as fancy as yours. I did not have a dinosaur button and I haven't seen it. Oh. It says, my coat is ruined. Oh, your coat is ruined because it's missing a button? Oh, that can make me really sad. There is a book that I think you would wanna read about a very 
funny character named Pete the Cat. There he is. He doesn't look so funny. He always looks kind of like, hmm, serious, doesn't he? But he also lost a button. But did he fret? Goodness, no. He just kept on going on. So we're going to read the book, Pete the Cat and His Four Groovy Buttons Together. This book is by James Dean, and he created the character Pete the Cat. So let's see. Look at all these buttons. Let's see if we can count them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one. The age Miss Lara still wishes she could be. <laughs> Pete the cat and his four groovy buttons. Let's see. Pete the cat put on his favorite shirt with four big, colorful, round, groovy buttons. He loved his buttons so much, he sang this song. Now, you're going to have to sing with me at home, but first, I want you to notice, here's the number four, and we're going to count his buttons. Ready? One, two, three, four. They're not as cool as the dinosaur button that you lost, but these are pretty groovy. My buttons, my buttons, my four groovy buttons. My buttons, my buttons, my four groovy buttons. So there he is singing his song. <gasps> Pop! Oh no! Pop! One of the buttons popped off and rolled away. How many buttons are left? Three. You have four, you take away one, and that's the same as three. We can count to make sure. One, two, three, and that's the number three. Groovy. Did Pete cry? Goodness, no! Buttons come and buttons go. He kept on singing his song. My buttons, my buttons, my three groovy buttons. My buttons, my three groovy buttons. Pop! Oh no. One came off and rolled away. How many buttons are left? What do you think? How many buttons are left? I see a lot of peace signs out there. That must mean there are two. Two buttons left. Did Pete cry? Goodness, no. Buttons come and buttons go. He kept on singing his song. My buttons, my buttons, my two groovy buttons. My buttons, my buttons, my two groovy buttons. Look at that. Pop! Oh no! Another button popped off and rolled away. How many buttons are left? Pete the cat is going to lose his coat, isn't he? He only has one button left. Now, see here, two, and you take away one button. That's the same as one. And did Pete cry? What do you think? Did he cry this time? Goodness, no. Buttons come and buttons go. He kept on singing his song. Okay, you gotta sing with me. Ready? My buttons, my buttons, my one groovy buttons. My buttons, my buttons, my one groovy button. And what do you think happened next? Pop! Oh no! The last button popped off and rolled away. How many buttons are left? A big, fat, Zero! That's the number zero. That's how you say it in words. Because you have one and you take one away, that makes zero. Did Pete cry? Goodness, no! Buttons come and buttons go. Pete looked down at his buttonless shirt and what do you think he saw? I'm not sure. His belly button! <laughs> right there. I don't think that one's going to pop off. 
and he sang his song because it's all good. My button, my button, still have my belly button. My button, my button, still have my belly button. I guess it simply goes to show that stuff will come and stuff will go. But do we cry? Goodness, no. We keep on singing. Buttons come and buttons go. The end. So what did you think of our story, Pete the Cat and His Four Groovy Buttons? I don't know about you, but that song is going to be stuck in my head all day. My buttons, my buttons. <laughs> Pete the Cat has many other stories that you can check out at your local library and on the Sora app. So I wonder if you read more books, which will be your favorite? Right, right now, we're going to work on a foundational skill. We're actually going to work on syllables. Syllables are parts of a word. And for this activity, you need your clapping hands because we're going to clap out the syllables in the words I have here. Look, Pete pulled some words from the story and other his favorite words. So we have button, colorful, goodness, pop, all of those words. I'm going to try to guess or see how many parts of the words there are. So let's look at the first word, colorful. Do you hear the parts of that word? Colorful. Let's clap it out. Ready? Get your clappers. It goes like this. Colorful. How many parts or syllables does it have? Colorful. Three. That's right. Let's try another word now. How about goodness? Goodness. Do you hear that? Goodness. That's goodness. Two syllables. Let's try some more words. Ooh, this is one of his favorite words. He loves to play basketball. Basketball. Ready? Get your clappers. Basketball. Basketball. That's three syllables. How about pop? That's an easy one, isn't it? Pop. Pop. Just one. How about this one? Fantastic. Fantastic. That's fantastic. That's three. That's right. And one last one. Let's do button. 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 That's how many? Two. That's correct. So I hope that you practice your syllables all day today. Maybe with your name and see who has the most syllables of all the names in your family. Use your clappers to make sure. Right now, we're going to move over to our project place because our focus text is Pete the Cat today. I found this activity for making Pete the Cat slime, and I thought, oh, of course, we're going to make Pete the Cat slime, and we're going to add buttons to it, obviously. So let's walk over to the project place to see Let's make some slime together. All right. Come on over, Pete the Cat. So for this recipe, you're actually only going to need three ingredients, and you may already have them in your house. So the first ingredient is some clear glue. Now, you're going to want to use the clear stuff. Normally, I use the white glue, but this stuff is what makes the best slime. Plus, we're going to add color to it, so we want that color to show through. And then we're going to need some liquid starch. Now, this is what's normally used when you want to make fabrics really hard. Like if you want to iron something, you might put some liquid starch in some water and spray down a fabric, and it'll be really, really hard. So we're going to make our slime first, and I'll show you our machine that I brought to share, our serger. Okay, so... We need some buttons too, because we got to make it Pete the Slime, this groovy button slime. So we're going to add one cup of clear glue inside of our bowl. So let's see. Here we go. I'm going to do it from far so you can see. A waterfall of glue. How often do you see a waterfall of glue? Me never. <laughs> There's one cup. 
And there it goes into our bowl. Isn't our bowl a groovy color? Super highlighty. Nice. So next we're going to add half of a cup of liquid starch. And you, parents, you can actually make this um, in half. So you can use half a cup of liquid glue if you just want to make a small batch. And then you can use a quarter of a cup of liquid starch. So depending on how much or how little you want to make. And then we're going to add three drops of food coloring. And guess what color I'm going to use? Yellow, because that's the color that reminded me of Pete the cat. So here we go. One, two, three. Now what's really interesting about this recipe is you start off with a liquid. So you can kind of see it's getting a little solid, but you start off very liquidy and then it turns into a solid. So I'll have to mix it around. You have to mix it for quite a bit and then it gets globby. There we are. It looks like egg yolks actually. <laughs> <laughs> you have to mix it for a while. And the little tip I have is if it is not coming together for whatever reason, or it's too sticky when you handle it, you're going to want to add a little more liquid starch. It's just like baking these recipes. You add a little more or a little less until you get the recipe just right. I think I might have to add just a little more liquid starch. I'm going to lift it up so you can see it. Ooh, it's starting to feel like slime. <laughs> Here we go. Ooh, a little bit more because it's still pretty slimy. Here we are. And then I'm going to mix it just a touch more. And then I'll show you the glob. I'll take it out with my hands. Now, sensory activities like this are very important experiences for children. The process of even making the recipe will help them with quantity, following directions, sequencing things, and then the language that they get as they experience this sensory activity is so important. And you know, just the engagement of it, the happiness in their faces when you make a slime and then they run it through their hands. <laughs> the egg yolk, look at that. <laughs> Globby mess, huh? It is so much fun to play with. I'll try to take it out a little bit here so you can see it. There it is, glob. And I made some earlier as well. So you can see we can put them all together. <laughs> this recipe really does make the best slime. Okay, and it actually makes noises as you mix it. The last part of this recipe is going to be adding some groovy buttons. Now, do you remember how many buttons Pete the Cat had? Was it? That's right, four. I didn't think you'd remember, but I'm so glad you screamed that into the screen. I heard it way over here. So I'm going to pick my favorite colors. Let's see. I have green, blue, purple, pink. I'm going to go with pink. There it goes. And blue and green and purple and there's my Pete the Cat slime. <laughs> and you can play with this and make different shapes and describe what it feels like. One thing I am going to recommend as you make the different recipes and try the different activities here is start a journal. Give it a name, your PBS journal. So when you make an activity, you can start writing or drawing about the things that you experience here. That's another way to bring in literacy. Okay, so you can see, not too sticky. This will stay pretty well in, for about a day, but then it'll start to get really sticky. And one tip I have to kind of revive it, to keep it going, is just to add a little more liquid starch. And then it'll be good as new. So I hope you try this out. Right now, I'm going to show you a machine that I brought to share with you today. Now, let me see here. All right. This machine is called a serger. Can you say that word? Serger. Its special letter is S. 
Now it's kind of a fancier machine, not everyone has it, but if you look inside your clothes, like your sleeves, you'll notice that there's some stitching that goes up and down like this, and it creates a very nice finished edge. Now you'll remember my sewing machine had one spool of thread. This one actually has one, two, three, four spools. So it goes, takes a lot of thread to make one thing. So you're gonna go through here and you thread it through and like a sewing machine, it has a needle here and it actually has a cutter where it cuts the fabric in a straight line as it sews, creating a very nice finished edge. I'm gonna show you a little bit here. So you can see the needle going up and down, up and down. And you can see a little bit of the line that it creates with the thread right here. So if you have one of these machines at home or you know somebody that does, I hope that they let you look around and see its mechanics because we might have some future engineers watching and being able to see how things work is so important to inventing and creating on your own. All right, since we have just a little bit more time, I think, I'm gonna show you my recommended book. Okay, so I have a book recommendation that we've already read together. It is called The Paper Bag Princess. Now you'll have to go back to week one of our summer episodes at the Valley PBS website or on YouTube to check out our video story of this book. So if you remember, this book is about a little girl who wears a dress made out of a paper bag because everything was stolen from her from a mean, vicious dragon. And there's her, her love, the prince who did not stay with her because she was dressed in a paper bag and kind of dirty at the end. Oof, there's the dragon carrying away her prince. And then I'll take you through a little bit more of the story. She ends up outsmarting the dragon using her wit. Very good to be intelligent, especially if you're a girl. You gotta outsmart the dragon in the stories. And at the very end, the dragon ends up falling asleep. I'll show you, the dragon's so tired. He ends up falling asleep and she is able to save the prince. So it kind of goes against the stereotypes of the books that you see. So parents are a really good one if you have a little girl that's kind of used to the other way around. But the prince turns out he doesn't like Princess Elizabeth in her paper bag, all dirty. And he says, sorry, gotta clean yourself up. And she's like, Psh, I don't need a prince anyway and walks off and lives happily ever after on her own. So you can share this book with your children and it's good for little boys too. So they don't always have to feel that they have to save the princess. So I hope that you check this out at your local library. Looks like we have enough time for our long alphabet song. So we'll sing that together and then I'll let you know what we're going to do for the rest of the week. Are you ready? A is for amazing, that's what you are. B is for brave, that'll carry you far. C is for caring and community. And D is for determined, be the best you can be. E is for empathy, caring for all. F is for friends, that'll catch you when you fall. G is for grateful for everything around. And H is for hopeful, there's more good to be found. I is for imagine all the fun things we could do. J is for joyful, how I feel when I'm with you. K is for kind to people and animals too. And L is for love, put it in all that you do. M is for mindful, be present every day. N is for nice words in everything you say. O is for original, always be you. And P is for persevere until you make it through. Q is for quiet, those bad thoughts. R is for remember all the greatness that you've got. 
S is for strong, body and mind. And T is for talent, why not make yours being kind? U is for unique, special and loved. V is for victorious, always rise above. W is for worthy and wonderful too. And X, don't X out those mistakes, they're what make you you. Y is for yes, we get to the end of this rhyme. And that's the alphabet, I'll see you next time. All right, boys and girls, let's see. How much time do we have together? All right, I will let you know what we're going to do tomorrow. We're going to study Veterans Day, so I hope that you come back then. We'll see you. Goodbye, my friends. We'll see you later.